Heflin's newest retailer opened with a bang this week. One more day of very warm temperatures across East Alabama and then changes coming for the weekend. We'll have the complete forecast coming up. Coming up in sports, it's National Letter of Intent Day and we look at one local baseball player who signed to play college baseball. AN Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. Hi, we're glad you could join us. I'm Katie Edwards. And I'm Mike Stedham. Bama Guns and Outfitters opened its doors Tuesday in Heflin. The retailer will sell guns and hunting gear, according to owner Randy Cooper. We carry guns, uh, hunting clothing, um, scents, and we'll be carrying, it's, it's mainly just a hunting store, um, although do, we do carry some um, ARs and AKs. Um, we mainly decided to open here because the community has been so welcoming to us and friendly, everyone has helped out here. Um, it, it's just a great community. Uh, crime rate's low, uh, um, people are extremely nice and this is one of the biggest growing um, cities there is right now in Alabama. Although the shop features a traditional retail location, it also has started building an internet following. Excited customers have written on the Facebook page that they can't wait to check out the new business. Another woman with a profile that states she's a Georgia resident tagged a friend and said, we're going to take a trip to Alabama. Cooper says Heflin is a great place to open his business. He's from Oxford, but he says he spent lots of time with friends in Cleburne County. I also uh, did a little work with another shop um, in the uh, Hollis Crossings area and uh, kind of got to know sort of the area around here. And um, the, the people are just great from everyone from Gigafy to the people that put our phones in, um, just been going at Chamber of Commerce out of their way to welcome us. Cooper says he's already making plans to expand his offerings as he gets to know his customer's base. One of Cooper's employees, Ashton Grace Tucker, says she's a White Plains native who is glad to find a job in her field so close to home. I was on the White Plains cheer team and when the Heflin's cheer uh, gym was being built, we would cheer we would use our gym to uh, cheer with the Heflin cheer team, and so we got really close with them. So growing up, I was really close with people all around Heflin and stuff like that. So that's why I was really interested in coming here. Um, it's 16 minutes away from my house, and the guys that I work with are awesome. They treat me with respect. Our customers are awesome. I haven't had one rude customer at all, which is... Um, amazing. <laughs> but yeah, so um, Heflin's just a really, really, really good town. Bama Guns and Outfitters joins a growing number of firearm and hunting stores in the area. They include Shotgun Sports and Outdoors in Anniston and the CMP South Store. When we come back, it's time to stop burning things outside. Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. Starting at 8 Thursday morning, the entire state of Alabama will be under an official no-burn order issued by Governor Kay Ivey. This means no open fires or burning of debris, avoiding outdoor grilling or cooking with open flames, and refraining from the use of fireworks or other pyrotechnics. Ivy said that she issued this order because the entire state is experiencing extremely dry conditions that increase the danger of major wildfires that could burn out of control and endanger both life and property. 
She said that since October 24th, the State Forestry Commission has been working around the clock, responding to 352 wildfires that have so far burned 3,199 acres of forest in the state. The no burn order will remain in effect statewide until it's rescinded by the governor's office. The Anniston City Council is considering a new ward map that would move more than 1,400 residents into different voting districts before next year's election. The proposed reshuffling would bring all four wards closer in population equality. The new boundaries were suggested by experts at the East Alabama Planning and Development Commission who said their goal was to keep each ward within 5% of ideal number of residents. The map would remove 463 residents from Ward 1 and 371 from Ward 4 while adding 455 to Ward 2 and 179 to Ward 3. The most heavily affected area is in North Anniston where residents along Alabama 21 will be transferred from Ward 1 to Ward 2. The council discussed the proposed changes at Tuesday night's work session and plans to adopt a new ward map in December. When we return, a local institution is holding its Veterans Day program one day early. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. Veterans Day isn't until Saturday, but Jacksonville State University decided to hold its Veterans Day ceremony on Friday. The program begins at 10 a.m. in the TMB Auditorium, and it will recognize the veterans in the community. And we close with this reminder for you from the McClellan Development Authority. The McClellan Multi-Use Trails will be closed until around noon this Saturday for the Tread Hoofalon. And in case you've forgotten, that's the event that combines a bike race with a horse race with a foot race. You can find more details on the MDA's website. Well, all good things come to an end. Kate. Indeed they do. You know, we were talking about the story about the no burn order and that right. includes grilling and it has been perfect weather for grilling outdoors in our flip flops and it really feels a lot like summer, but you're right. I mm. think John Holder is just about to share with us some changes on the horizon. John? Mike and Katie, temperatures running about 12 to 15 degrees above the average today across East Alabama and we're going to continue that for at least one more day. The complete forecast is next. For metal buildings in Alabama and the Southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. Temperatures again today across East Alabama soaring into the low 80s. Our average high today is 68 degrees, but we reached 82 this afternoon, well above the average. Our morning low this morning at 47. We were very close. Record high today, 85. We were close to that. The record low, 24. We were not close to that at all. The sun rising tomorrow on Thursday at 609. And look at that sunset time this evening at 445. Weather on your street on a Tuesday. Going to take out to Saks Road in the Saks area of Anniston. A very mild evening. The low tonight, 58 degrees under clear skies. Keep in mind that 58 degree temperature will not be into the wee hours of the morning. Most of the evening tonight, we're going to be in the 60s and 70s, not only in Saks, but all across Calhoun and Cleveland counties. Coming up tomorrow on your Thursday, increasing clouds throughout the day. Out on Alabama Highway 144 in Ohatchee, you're going to see sunshine in the morning. That will kind of dull throughout the day, and I think we'll wind up with a mostly cloudy sky by sunset tomorrow. The high, once again, way above average at 80 degrees. 
And for the start of the weekend coming up on your Friday, Saturday time frame, very light showers coming on Pelham Road South in Jacksonville, the south end of town. The high on Friday is going to be around 70. The high for the weekend, we're only going to be in the 60s. You'll see that coming up now in our seven day forecast. A lot of raindrops on there, a lot of pretty high rain percentages as compared to what we've had, which has been zero lately. But uh, the rainfall amounts not going to be particularly heavy. They are going to be a little bit more than what we thought at this time yesterday, maybe a half inch to an inch between midnight coming up tomorrow night and maybe Sunday afternoon. About a 40% chance of a shower on Friday, a 40% chance on Saturday, about a 50-50 chance of rain on Sunday. All three of those days, not a total washout. Going to be very light rainfall amounts, but temperatures will be the big difference. We're backing off into the low 60s for highs of both Saturday and Sunday. So forget the 80s, those are gone, even the 70s for a while. Nighttime lows that have been in the upper 50s and low 60s, those will back off to around the 49 to 50 degree range. And then we're back to more dry weather coming up to begin the work week next week. We'll be in the low, or I should say uh, mid 60s, lower 40s, maybe another dry day on Tuesday. And then we're starting to bring back a little bit of rainfall again by the middle of the week next week. So slowly but surely, the pattern is changing a little bit out of this drought as we start to bring in more waves of light rainfall here to East Alabama. We will take what we can get. Speaking of rainfall, this is not good. This shows you in the last 30 days here in East Alabama, we are, this is compared to where we normally would be at this time of year, the 30 day average, we are three inches in most places. Some parts of Western Calhoun County at four inches, but we are basically region wide here in Calhoun and Cleburne counties about three inches below what we would normally get at this time of year. So way behind on the rainfall, but that's going to change for the weekend. Join me back here tomorrow morning, bright and early 6 a.m. We'll have your breakfast and workday forecast coming up. But right now, National Signing Day coming up for a lot of folks in baseball and Namath Pitts all over it in sports. Namath. Thanks, John. Today is National Letter of Intent Signing Day for high school athletes across the country. Cleburne County had one special player make his commitment to play college baseball. Cleburne County baseball player Jason Deese signed the dotted line today where he officially set to play baseball for Central Alabama. Jason was all area 4A team last year and was awarded Tri-County Player of the Year, which was voted on by all eight of the baseball coaches in Cleburne County, Randolph, and Clay County baseball teams. We caught up with Jason Deese to talk about how he feels to have signed that dotted line on National Signing Day. Well, it's really exciting. I've really worked hard. I overcame a lot of adversity to get to this point, and I worked my butt off for this moment. I'm really excited. Jason Deese also shared his thoughts on playing baseball past high school. I never, I never wanted my last baseball game to be high school. I've always wanted to play farther. And now, now I'm here. Now I'm just really excited. We also talked with Cleburne County head baseball coach Robert Townsend, and he talked about the difficulty to sign a letter of intent, but he also shared his excitement for Jason Deese. To sign nowadays, as hard as it is for these uh, kids coming out of college, this is a great thing for him, and I think he's going to do very well for where he's moving on to the next level. Cleburne County football is headed to the playoffs for the first time since 2015. They will make the trip to Jackson to face the Aggies. Head coach Joby Burns talked with us, and he talked about his excitement of making the playoffs in Class 4A. Well, we're very excited. Uh, you know, these guys have overcome a lot this year, and we're excited, you know, for the kids. These guys, it's the first time they've been in the playoffs, and, and we're excited for our community because they, they support us a ton. So it's big for us. It's big for these seniors. We've got about 20 seniors, and like I said, great that they're able to experience this because they've overcome a lot of adversity and, and just, uh, you know, put in a lot of hard work and very, very excited for them, very excited for our younger guys. I mean, this has given us extra weeks to practice these younger guys and that's a big thing but you know this community is very excited they've been behind us all year long very supportive and I know they're proud of us. Cleburne County clinched the playoff spot by going on the road and upsetting Walter Welburn. Head coach Joby Burns talked about the big win that clinched them a playoff spot one week ago. 
close right there at the end and you know had to you know make a play on the last play of the game to to uh to stop them so yeah it was it was a relief to win the game and then to realize that you know the magnitude of it to, that we got in the playoffs because of that win yeah it just made it a little more special but yeah these those guys worked hard and i was proud of them the way they came out and fought and competed because they, they did a really good job that night we talked with two cleveland county players who talked about the excitement and significance of making the playoffs here is Nate Adams on the significance of making the playoffs. All the work that we've put in over the years, uh, it all came down to that one moment and just being able to play hard and finish that game, uh, it really meant a lot to us to finally make it in what we've been aiming for this whole time. Jake Dingler has been an impact player for Cleburne County all season long and he talked about making the playoffs. It was huge. Like, I've, we've all been wanting to go to the playoffs for a long time, so when we finished that game, it was just a huge celebration. So we've accomplished that, but our next goal is state championship. That's it for EAN Local Sports. Let's go back over to Mike and Katie. Thanks for the update, Namath, and thank you for watching today. You can find us here online every weekday on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, as well as on our website, eastalabamanow.com. Just go to our video feed and watch the news whenever it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here Thursday for your news on your schedule.